come into this house yes. and gathered in his name to worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. He is all our righteousness. We stand complete in him and we have come to what? Worship him. We have come to worship. Worship Christ our Lord. If that's what you came to do, give him a standing ovation. Come to worship him. Come to worship him. Come to worship him. Rose up to worship him. Live to worship him. Even with tears, worship him. Amen. 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 So glad to be here this afternoon with you in your annual women's convention. Thank God that you're still here and you're still carrying on the work of the Lord. You're still giving God what he deserves. Amen. And while you're yet standing, I'm going to ask you to acknowledge the bishop, the pastor, the senior leader of this church and organization in none other than Bishop Rochford. Put your hands together. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. We recognize all of the leading ladies, the ministers, the evangelists, those who are working with him Amen. In the yes. women's department, I congratulate you too and give you, ask God to give you the strength to build the work. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that next year, this time, greater things will happen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So turn around to us some money. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're in church with me. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to be before you very long, but we have some products out in the lobby in the area where the other products are. And at the end of the service, if you have any money left, you can go by and just pick up a few of these CDs and DVDs that you don't have in your library. Amen? and just be a blessing to the ministry. But right now, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs the 18th chapter. And I'm just going to read one verse, verse 10. That's Proverbs 18 verse 10. I'm reading from the King James Version. Proverbs 18, verse 10 reads, the word of the Lord reads, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So far the text. And the title of this sermon, nothing fancy, nothing too colorful or catchy. The only safe place. Tell your neighbor, there's only one safe place. Um, the book of Proverbs belongs to that section in the Bible called wisdom literature. And it fits into that section with Ecclesiastes and even Job. Song of Solomon. The Hebrew Christian or the Hebrew saint or the ancient Hebrew, I should say properly, they had questions about life. 
They had questions about death. They had questions about honesty, about righteousness. They had a lot of questions. And they looked to the wisdom leaders or the sage of those times, the people with sagacity, we call them, to give them some guidance. In the Jewish community, it's the rabbi. In the Christian community, it should be the pastor. But it's not the pastor anymore. You just Google it and you get an answer about anything. <laughs> but anyway, they went to people who had sound words, people who could help them to live their life differently. And that's what Solomon attempted to do in the book of Proverbs. He was a man with uncompromising wisdom. That's what God gave him as a gift. And so these writings help us to grapple with questions. In this particular text, in this chapter, you'll find discussion about the fool and the wicked. And, and, and the word Proverbs means comparison. So how, how, is, how is the writer going to help the reader? I'm going to compare you and show you the difference between the wicked and the righteous. I'm going to show you the difference between the fool and the person who fears the Lord. So there's this constant comparison, hoping you'll have enough sense to choose the right thing. So the word Proverbs means comparison. So in this chapter, you'll have the fool and the wicked talks about wisdom, talks about the contention of fools, the talebearer and the slothful, all the things that we try to act like is not important. But it's important to know a talebearer. It is. It's important to know that you can't tell certain people everything. Because they're going to tell it. And then in the midst of all of this counsel, this comparison, he drops this verse that seemingly doesn't belong in Proverbs. It belongs in the Psalms probably. But it's right up in here because you see, in Proverbs and Psalms, it's not like reading narratives where you can go from one chapter to the other and find the story moving along. They can talk about one thing from the other and it doesn't seem to connect. And that's what it seems like here. What is this verse doing in the midst of talking about fools? Talking about evil people and wicked people. Well, I choose to think that this verse is a verse that ties it together. Because if you go to the 10th verse and you're walking in the 10th verse, then you're not going to be anybody's fool. You're going to live a certain way. So we need to look at the 10th verse. First thing it says, the name of the Lord. And name for the ancient Hebrew is supposed to tell you something about the person's character. We went crazy a couple of years ago and still a little crazy by naming our children names that they can't spell. And, um, and people are still trying to find out why somebody would name their daughter Latrine. And Latrine is an outhouse. But, but anything that is a little quaint without any meaning. See, life should be filled with meaning. So the first point is all in a name. The name marks honor, authority, renown, position, and character. Looked up my name the other day, because everybody's into accent, and, 
Ancestry.com. Some things you better leave alone because, you know, you're going to find something about your grandmother you don't want to know. But anyway, um, <laughs> looked up my name. <laughs> looked up my name and my name, the, the derivative of my name comes from Jacob. <laughs> Thank God I'm saved. Because <laughs> Jacob was a trickster. <laughs> Thank you Jesus for the Holy Ghost. Anyway, so it says the name, the character, the honor, the character of the Lord. And there are many names for God in the Bible, but in this verse, it is Jehovah. So the character, the honor, the thing that we should remember about Jehovah is that his name means I am who I am. I am who I say I am. And I will be what I want to be. It literally means I'm a self-contained God. I'm, I don't need anything or anyone to make me God. And you can't subtract from me and make me less of a God. Or you can't add to me and make me more of a God. I'm God within myself. So when you're praying, when you're, when, when you're thinking about the name, you're thinking about the character and the power of who God is. In Genesis 17 and 1, it says, when Abraham was 90 and 9 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And the Almighty God means I have no contenders. There's nobody that can whip me. <laughs> you understand that? You're crying over some supervisor. There's nobody that can whip me. Exodus 3 and 13, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers had sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you ought to say to the Israelites. I am sent to you. I am what I want to be. I want to be your healer. I am that. I want to be... Your deliverer, I am that. I want to be your corrector, I am that. Whatever I say I am, whatever I want to be, can't nobody stop me from being. Revelation 1 and 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, said the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty God. Now, that should really create excitement in our hearts. We should be hopping on one leg. We should be excited because this is not a jack leg talking now. This is not a con artist. This is not a wannabe God. This, this is God. This is it. You understand? And his name means just that. I am all that and more. Amen. Saints are not excited anymore about that. You know, in the old days, the old folk, you just had to say Jesus and church was over. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just had to strike up a little tune. Then you have to have a lot of words. Of Jesus and then they add a little moan to it. And church was over. Ain't got no organ or nothing. Just Jesus. Because they understood what it meant. They understood that his name is wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. And he's a prince of peace. When you know him, for he is his name, his name describes him. I am. I am the Almighty. So it says here, the name of the Lord, meaning the Lord himself. You understand? Be careful how you name your children. Because it's telling you something about their character. 
the name of the Lord, the character of the Lord, the righteousness of the Lord, the holiness of the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord, the power of the Lord. This is not just a name. This is who he is. Who he is. Who is he? Is a strong. And the word strong tower means a strong place. It means a hiding place. If you read Genesis 11, 4, that's what Nimrod wanted to do, to build a strong tower to get up to heaven. In 2 Samuel, David cried, the Lord is my rock, my refuge, and he's my stronghold. Now, you may not need a strong place to hide because, you know, you got it going on. You, you, you may know how to take care of yourself. You, you might have, you know, bodyguards and you might have people that you can call to handle it. But to the average saints, we need a place to go to in this evil, unpredictable world. This world that is anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christianity. I need to know that I am protected. I need to know that I have some place to run to when I'm in despair. And the reason why saints in the church are committing suicide and preachers are committing suicide and saints are drinking liquor to get over, people in church are taking antidepressant drugs because they forgot this. You see, when you forget this, you better take something. You got to take something. In this world of pressure and stress, do you know what causes 95% of the physical illness? Stress. Anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, disappointment, all of that stuff affects us. So you've got to have some place to go to. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is what? You gotta remember his name. We were, we were flying in from Atlanta, just took off the runway to come back home, and the engines blew out. And the plane was hanging in the sky, over water. The name of the Lord. Just glided the plane and landed us safely. Listen, I don't know who you call on in those strange times. Listen to me. Ain't no other name like his name. He knows how to fly a plane, saints. Oh, yes, he does. The name of the Lord. Psalm 91 and 2 says, I would say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Now, this is what blew my mind, Bishop. You know, Bishop and I used to go to school together years ago. I'm sure you've heard the story, indulge us. But um, we used to go to Calvary and take Greek together. We would drive together and... Um, I could always tell when he's challenged, he would chew his lip, <laughs> chew up his lip. So studying the word has always been our passion. Yes. Not just taking a verse and making a tune out of it, but we were always hungry for deeper Amen. understanding. Amen. And there was another word, Bishop, that blew my mind. You can check behind me because it caused me to have church by myself. Another meaning for the word tower or strong tower means a wooden pulpit. I'm almost finished now because I can stay right there. So the name of the Lord is like a wooden pulpit. And it refers to when Ezra stood up in the streets and that's a first time pulpit was mentioned in the Bible. 
when the children of Israel returned from captivity and had never heard a real sermon before. They, they had never heard the law read in all them 50 years they were down in Babylon. So everybody was in the street from morning until late afternoon. Some of you are looking at your watch now. From morning until late afternoon. And at, stand, that's right, stand up. Ain't no seat. Some of y'all would have just died. So ain't no seat. Ain't no air conditioning. Nothing. Just standing up. And it was a wooden pulpit. No fancy plexiglass and them little funny things we have in church. None of that stuff. But a simple wooden pulpit to what? Read. Just read the word of the Lord. Just read it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. Teach it to your children when they get up in the morning. Teach it to them when they walk in the way. Teach it to them when they come back home. Write it on their forehead. Put it over your doorpost that the Lord your God is the only God that you need. Oh, come on, church. We need to go back to the wooden the strong tower of the church is in the name of the Lord we should be ushered behind the pulpit that's the problem the wooden pulpit has become a stage for cliches and entertainment no wonder you can shout and be suicidal. No wonder, no wonder you can speak in tongues and still cut yourself. No wonder you can come in here and dance and still go to the club. Because ain't nothing coming from the wooden. It's a safety. When you sit in that seat, you ought to be safe because of what comes from the pulpit. Your life ought to be protected because it's covered by the word of God. And if there's no word coming, you're not saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. One of the ministers preached this morning, so that's why I ain't got no curls. Look like I didn't comb my hair. Forgive me, saints, but I just shouted out just... I just carried on badly this morning. Just carried on. Just, just danced my way out the church and danced back in. And then come back and dance again. That's why I was running late. Almost forgot I had to preach. Because the word of God shifted my life. The word of God gave me answers. All oh, weekend long I was wrestling. And when the man got through, the word of God settled my spirit. And now I'm safe. Oh, come on and put your hands together for being safe. Not in a feel good. Not in a make me feel good. Because feel good passes away. But the word of God, what? Stands forever. So the name of the Lord in your life, the character of God, the power of God in your life is as strong as as the pulpit is in your life. If there's no strong word, there's no sure security. If the word of God is not given to you, there's no hiding place. If God is not exalted, if he's not taught and taught again, because we don't like teaching, that's why we have Sunday morning service and nobody come to Bible study. But you ain't saved. You ain't saved. Mm -mm. When you don't have no word, you ain't saved. I'm sorry. I don't care how much I get up here and try to fake it. I'm not safe in the arms of God without the word of God. The Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only forgot, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what you're living on, what keeps you from going crazy? What keeps you from cussing? What keeps you from giving up? What keeps you from backsliding quietly? What keeps you from giving up? It's the word. Oh, somebody help me holler word, word, word. It's a strong word. The 
the word of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, a strong pulpit, make us safe people. We only have a few minutes up here. Right. We don't have a long time before you run out of here to eat dinner. You ain't got that much time. And some of the time you don't even show up. So when we get you, we got to work you. To keep you out of the hand of the enemy. To keep the devil from eating up your soul. And when the enemy comes upon me like a flood. It's the spirit of the Lord that takes a stand against it. You can't endure temptation and overcome without the word. You can't go through the storm without the word. You can't make right choices without the word. You can't keep your pants on without the word. Oh, come on. <laughs> can't keep your zipper up without the word. Take the word. You cannot keep yourself from new age phenomenon without the word. It's seeping in the church. And you know, you have more ha-ha moment than you have Bible moment. Come on, we have replaced the language of the world with the Bible. When the Bible said the word of the Lord is sharp, it's quick, it's like a two-edged sword. It cuts even to the marrow. It divides things asunder. It assesses and gets down into the deep, quiet darkness of our soul. You need the word to operate in you so that you become what God has called you to be. When the feeling is gone, you need the word. When the shout is over, you need the word. When the church doors are closed, you need a word. When the pastor is not available, you need a word. When ain't nobody answering their phone, you need the word. When you've got to make a choice, you need the word. When your pocketbook is empty, you need the word. When they're getting ready to evict you because you ain't paid your rent, you need the word. Come on. Now, not everybody wants this word. It's very clear. The righteous runneth into the safety of the preached word. The name of the revealed God. Because when we preach the word, we reveal God to you. See, there are things that are covered, and the word comes to uncover God. And the more God is uncovered, is the stronger you get. The more he shows himself to you, is the more clarity you get. You see, and that's why many of us are going around in circles, because he's still covered. Not that he's hiding, no, but that you're not there to hear it. You don't read your Bible during the week. You don't read it for meditation. You don't even carry it. And now that you have I this and I that, you have it. And we think that you're following the text. You text it while we preach it. You ain't following no word. The righteous escapes into the word. Tell your neighbor, that's an escape route. That's an escape route there. When I get in trouble, I run. There's a place to hide from those vexing situations, from those things that have you pinned up in a corner and nobody can bring you out. When, when it seems like all hope is gone and there is no way of escape, I run up into something. Run to the word. But not everybody likes to run to the word. Even in church. Because not everybody is righteous. The word righteous means straight. That's all it means. It means straightness. 
It means conforming to a standard. Whose standard? God's. And if you're not conforming to his standard, then you're not straight. And talking to a young man, you know, just came off the plane, Bishop, and Holy Ghost said, call him. Because they know I call when I get ready. I don't care if they're in the bathroom or the toilet, I'm calling him. Get up off the toilet, answer the phone, because I got something to say. And he's very skillful. You know, I told him, you should have been a lawyer. But then you're talking to another lawyer. See, because, you know, I've been there, and I know what you're doing. So just let's start the conversation off with not trying to be so skillful. It's a game. Let's just not play the game in the airport because then I get loud. Just, just, just say it. <laughs> the crookedness of the tongue. When we want to do what we want to do, we get skillfully crooked. <laughs> we get creatively crooked. We even use scripture to get crooked. I said, boy, you know who you talking to? <laughs> What's my name? Say my name, because you, you forget who you talking to on this phone. Because you can't take that scripture and cover sin. You can't, you, can't, you can't pull that out of context and make me think that God is going to honor fornication. I, if you find that, then if you find, then I must be missing out on some fun here because I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Righteous means that I have accepted the righteousness of Jesus Christ because there's nothing in me that wants to do right. I, I, hate to, I hate to say this to some of you who believe you were born special. But we were all born with a propensity to want nothing but evil. Ain't nothing straight about me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. All my righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't want to be right. Isn't that what Paul said? When I should do right, evil is present. See, that's why you keep singing because you think you would never do it. You think, you know, that's not me. That ain't me. Ask, ask anybody who got hooked on drugs. I'd never be a drug addict. I never, I never, I never. You understand? In this flesh, this wonderful flesh that we spend a lot of money on, there's nothing good. But it is the righteousness of God. When I accepted Jesus Christ, his righteousness was imparted injected into me like an IV put it up in my vein so when I do right it's not because I want to but he that is right is in me oh you better thank God he's up in there tell your name I'm so glad he's up in there if it had not been if it had not been if it had not been for the righteousness of God I would have no idea what right is. Wouldn't have no. So don't think, you know, good deeds make me right. No. Being a philanthropist make me right. Never, never, ever being to jail makes me right. Never got drunk makes me right. No, none of that. The only reason... Why I'm able to walk right from one minute to the other 
is because I trust him. He lives in me and he tells me what's right from his word. Other than that, I would be crooked. I'm a master at being crooked. <laughs> you hear what I said? You too. Don't be sitting there acting like I'm your way. Huh? Crookedness comes natural. Ask, ask your child. The child can't even talk good. Child, child's still in diaper. And they're crooked. They, 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 they haven't learned much yet. The Bible said the wicked is estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. It's natural. But the spirit of the Lord in me, thank God he lives in me. Where would I be this morning with my crooked self if Jesus didn't? put himself in me what would I be doing this morning with my rotten skunky self if Jesus did not die on the cross for me what would I be doing with my mind and my body if Jesus didn't give up himself for me come on and put your hands together for the righteousness of God So the righteous runneth. Now, the word runneth means you run all the time. You just don't run when you're in trouble. And the word running doesn't mean run or to break off. It literally means to hasten, to move quickly towards God. So you don't wait until things get totally out of control to run. You don't wait until you're almost out there, almost out there. You know, you call this one, you call that one, you try this. Now he is like an afterthought. No, you run to him first. You hasten. That means he's priority. Before you start calling all the crack people in the world, the people that tell you all these crack things that's based on earthly decision, you, you hasten, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'll call you back, I'll call you, I just need a minute, I just need a minute. I just need a minute to get it together. So I said, well, you know, if I were you, I would, no, no, I don't want to hear if I were you today. This is too serious. This is my life you're talking about. I don't need if I were you. I need to hear what thus say. Unless you come in with a word from the Lord, give me a minute. I don't need your counsel. I don't need your feeling. I don't need your opinion. I need a word from the Lord. And I want to hasten. I don't want to give the devil any room. I want to hasten to close the doors of any other opinion. I want to hasten. I don't want another three months wasted out of my life because I didn't hear what thus saith the Lord. I don't want another year of going around in circle. I want to hasten. Give it to me quick. Give it to me quick. Give it to me quick. Ah, come on. You better tell the people who are bringing the word to give it to me quick. Give it to me quick. Don't fool around. Don't, don't call me two months later and say, the Lord laid this on my heart. No, give it to me right away. Whether I roll my eyes or slam the door, give it to me quick. Because I got to be safe. Safe from myself. Give it to me quick. Only the righteous. Now, some of you, some of us, you know, we go to the doctor and we don't want the doctor to tell us the whole truth. But there's some people said, no, listen, don't play with me, doctor. This is my life. Just tell me what it is so I can take care of this. Some of us don't go because we don't want to hear. Righteous people want to hear. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. People who follow Christ, they want to hear him. People who believe in Christ. You believe in Christ. Ask your neighbor, you believe in him? You believe in him? You believe in his name? Do you believe in what he says about himself? Come on. Do you believe that he's able to do exceeding and abundant above all that he asks or think by the power that worketh in you? To believe that he's holy and righteous and that he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Do you believe that he's not a con artist, that he's not going to bamboozle you? Do you believe that he's not a player? He ain't playing 
train you. What he said, he'll bring it to pass. What he spoke, he'll make it good. If you believe it, run, 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 run to him, run to him. If you believe that he'll make a way out of no way, don't try to make no jacked up way. Run to him. He's got the answer. Put your hands together and let me hear you praise him. Hiya. The song said, I'll hasten to his throne. You took too long to get there. Many of us got in trouble because we went there afterwards. See? Instead of going there first, we went somewhere else. And now we got a whole lot of stuff. So we run into him now when we should have ran to him first. He's my hiding place. He's my refuge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwells. He who lives. He who hangs out. He who stays. Lord have mercy. Who, who sleeps. He who wakes up. He who eats in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I know where to hang. I don't know where you hang, but I know where to hang. I got a hangout spot. <laughs> Lord have mercy. When I get in trouble, there's a hangout spot in my house. And the devil knows when I get to that hangout spot, I'm going to get a word from the Lord. Oh, come on. I want to hear you praise him for your hangout spot. Hey, Abo, Shavan Sobiai. I feel a praise here too. Come on, and don't shut your eye. Yeah, God, come on and praise Him for your hangout spot. Hey. Sometimes it's the dashboard of your car, sometimes it's a shower in your bathroom, uh, but it's a hangout spot. That's where I hear something, I hear something. And no matter what's going on, he gives me a word for the day. Come on and thank God for the hangout spot. Hasten, tell your neighbor, run there. Now run there, run there. Come on, stop running from him, run to him. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop Googling and run to him. Stop asking the wrong people and run to him. Stop following the world and run to him. Now the marvelous thing about this is, you know, the pulpit can be anywhere. The pulpit doesn't have to be in church. You can have a pulpit in your house. The dashboard can be your pulpit. I remember Bishop before I, I you know, before I accepted fully the call to preach. Because you know you can accept it halfway and act like you don't know. And I was catching hell because I acted like I didn't know. See, when you act like you don't know, you catch hell. But anyway, so because I was trying to act like I didn't understand, and now I'm in hell, so I'm fully understanding. Because sometimes you got in hell, you got to go in hell to understand. See, before I acted like I didn't know, but now I'm in hell. It's clear, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear. So... I remember you used to line up the pots and the pans and preach a full course sermon. See, I wouldn't do it before, but hell made me, hell. Hell made me have a sermon. You know, hell will make you have a sermon. Somehow the word of God can be some, so clear to you, Shelly, that you start preaching to yourself. <laughs> Ah, when you get that word, that word starts transforming your mind. Ain't nobody can preach to you like when the Holy Ghost brings a message. So tell your neighbor, stop panicking and run, run. Where you going to? I'm running into the name of the Lord. I'm running into the word of the Lord. Hey, can't nobody bring me out of this but God. Can't nobody bring me out of this, no God. Even my friends can't bring me out. I don't care how much you love me. You can't do nothing with this. It's going to take the word of God to break it. That's why you grab your Bible. And even if you don't feel it, just read it. Just walk around your house and read it. Tell God, give you a word and read it. And then when you read it, you write it. Put it on a little, you know, card. 
an index card, put it in your pocketbook, write it big on your refrigerator so when you go to eat at 3 o'clock in the morning, it slaps you in the face. Put it on your iPhone and put it in your ear and start hearing the word. And I guarantee that word is going to break the gloom. I'm telling somebody, run to him, run to him, run to him. Ain't no safe place like in him. There's nobody that can protect you now than the Lord. Listen, there's evil all around. Evil in your house. Some people sleeping with the enemy. Evil, 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 evil. I hate that movie. Can't watch it, can't watch it. I get nervous when I watch it. Can't watch it, can't watch it. Sleeping with the enemy. Why are you sleeping? They plotting to kill you. Huh? Did you hear what I said? You can't play with nothing like that. Evil on the job. You think that that person likes you and they've been trying to write you up and set you up to get you up. Evil everywhere. The institutions are evil. America is in an evil place. Any day now, the stock market can crash. The banks can take your money. Any day now, they can put a bust button and stand, put you in utter darkness. They can shut down the grid all over America and we'll be in darkness for months evil is all around and here you are acting cute that you don't know who your God is you better run to the rock that is higher than I yes church is sleep tell your neighbor get in a safe place get in there get in there I've been we've been doing a series at the church on disaster relief and they, they act like they don't understand what I'm saying. But disaster is coming. Sandy was just a wake-up call. New York never thought, New York never thought we would have that kind of storm. New York never thought we would have earthquake and flood in that way. Very, very ill-prepared. Tell your neighbor, stop being ill-prepared. It's a wake-up call. Find a nook. Find your nook right in the word. Find your rock and hide in it. Get it ready. Get your family. Get your house in order. And tell them to run to the rock. You can wake up one morning one way and go to bed that night a different way. And the only way you didn't lose your mind is because you're wrapped up, tied up in him. Come on and put your hands together for a safe place. If you're righteous, ah, you're running. Tell your neighbor, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I'm running from every lie. I'm turning off the TV and spending 15 and 16 hours watching stuff that can't help me. I'm getting off the internet and putting dumb stuff on Facebook that can't get me out of trouble. Look at all the hours I spent on Facebook. Now I can't find one friend that can loose me. I'm going to take back my life. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm going to take back my life and spend some quality time with God. The hours that I spent on the, on, the, uh, on the internet, I could have spent that time finding answers, finding answers. I could have been prepared for what the devil was getting ready to do. I could have had instruction on how to set my house in order. So I rebuke the dullness that had taken over the church and I command that you run to the rock run to the rock run to the rock the righteous runneth tell your neighbor i'm moving now i'm moving uh-huh if you ain't going in the same direction please get out of my way i'm, I'm not gonna spend my time with deception uh, the enemy is coming to steal Ah, he's already stolen and he ain't satisfied. He comes to kill what he has stolen and then he comes to destroy. Tell your neighbor, I can't afford another stealing in my house. Ah, he's coming out to my house to steal. He wants to destroy. He wants to tear down. He wants to siphon out everything that God has given me. He wants to punch a hole in the blessing and pull it out. So I'm going to put my house in a safe place the righteous runneth there in to him is that what it says run it into means when you read the word into it means position it means to position 
The Bible said that we are a new creation. We're into Christ. That means I am positioned. I'm not just in. Because you can be in the church and not into Christ. You can be in this building and you done left me a long time ago. As soon as I start reading the text and it ain't making you feel nothing, you done left. Your body's here, but you ain't into it. You ain't into it. Just like you can be married and ain't into. It ain't hard. <laughs> but when you up in it, Jesus have mercy. There's a different kind of something when you get up in it. Not only when you get up in it, but when it gets up into you. <laughs> you understand what that means? That no matter where you go, you're a walking, talking word. Ah, you're not starving for the word. You're not empty. You're not dry. You're not just a, a, a surface Christian. The word of God pulsates in your bosom. Ah, when you get in trouble, the word of God explodes in you. Just when you're about to give up gives your strength to come up because where are you? I'm into him baby I'm into him I'm into him sorry I can't get into that because I'm into him <laughs> see what I'm saying you see where my choice went I can't go there because I'm into him because he don't go there <laughs> he doesn't visit there he don't hang there you ain't gonna find him there and if he ain't there I ain't there because I'm into him <laughs> I don't wear that. I don't wear that because I'm into him. And if I'm into him, he don't want me to look like that. No. <laughs> I'm almost finished. I feel a shout coming on. I, 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 don't, I don't smoke that because I'm into him. I don't drink that because I don't need it because I'm into him. Because I'm so into him, I'm full. I don't need nothing else. <laughs> ah, I don't have to go and follow every new age phenomenon because I get everything I need right here. I, I'm in, this is deep. I'm into him. He satisfies the longing of my soul. I can mm, taste him right now. I, I, don't, I don't need anything else to taste. Mm, my mouth is full of him. Somebody help me praise him, right? I said I'm full of him. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. You know when you got a thing for somebody and you're into them, yeah. The righteous run it into him, not into it, but into him. The security is in God. Tell your neighbor, my security is in God. The security, the security of my life is in God. And I'm going to end with this. You know, I have a brother. I don't always talk about my family. There are three of us, my sister, who lives in Atlanta now, and my brother. And my brother is adopted. And um, I used to work at Harlem Hospital as a nurse. And this baby was born. Mother was a heroin addict. And she just left him, dropped him and left him. No father, no mother. So they. He was in a, a ward of the state. I'm sure those in social work knows what I mean. And, um, and they called them border babies at that time because they stayed in the hospital until someone adopted them. Wonderful, beautiful, big eye baby, but had some withdrawals from the heroin. But anyway, it just so happens that his last name was the same as my family name, Phillips. So I asked my daddy, you've been somewhere that we don't know nothing about, but anyway. <laughs> so we decided to, I said, mommy, you know, we were out of the house, my sister and I, I was in college or finished school, whatever. No, I was working. And, and I said to her, there's a beautiful little baby boy and you love children, you know, you should you just check him out. So she went, fell in love with him and the judge immediately gave Charles to us and um, he got to a certain age 
and got restless because that heroin was still working in his system. Could play the organ and can preach rings around me because my daddy taught him to preach. But anyway, he, he got out in the street and he was giving us a hard way to go. And, you know, um, we couldn't keep anything in the house. We had that, you know, you would come by and we'd be watching that thing, you know. <laughs> We're the pocketbook. See? So, he, you know, he knew by the enemy where to find certain things. So I went to preach one time and um, I came home and hid the money under the bed and thought it was secured. And um, he came by and he had on a new leather jacket and just, you know, just talking happy. Because, you know, drugs make you foolish because if I, if I had stolen the money and bought a leather jacket, I would have disappeared. I wouldn't just show up with the jacket. See? So... He showed up with the jacket, and in those days, they had boon boxes. You know those big old boon boxes? He ain't got no job now. I got this big old boon box and a leather jacket and sporting it in my face. I said, you must have gotten a job. And he just, you know, laughing and joking. And the Holy Ghost said, check under your bed. And the money was gone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I must confess. This is confession. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I just came off the field and I preached, but I beat that boy so bad. <laughs> I know where I got the strength from. And he went all the way down the stairs in that leather jacket. Then he went to court and we were going to, you know, we got him a lawyer and we were going to do so many things. And I'm sitting in the court and the judge released him on bail. And I'm waiting for him to come. And it was cold and dark. It was three or four o'clock in the morning. And I'm waiting for him to come and meet me so he could go home. And he slipped out the side door and went back in the street. And I cried all the way home and the Lord said to me you want him to behave but I want him in heaven back up and let him go I had to hear the Lord tell me what to do I was getting ready to put up the house to get a lawyer I was get, and I'll never forget I was preaching in, in Detroit my mother called me and said he's back and he stole so and so and I started crying and I'm standing in front of the audience with the Bible open to preach and getting ready to cry and the Holy Ghost said either you cry and hold on to him or you preach the gospel and trust me and that moment I let him go now he's still in jail, but he got a prison ministry. He's preaching the gospel. He studies the word. He knows he's called to be with the Lord. But it took all of that to get his attention. But I had to run to safety. If I didn't run to safety, I wouldn't be able to trust the Lord for him and for me. Amen. These are vexing times. You can't play any mini money more with your life. You need God to intervene and put you on a straight path. And ladies and gentlemen, He's the only safe place in the world. How many times the doctors have said to some of you, you have cancer and the word of the Lord healed your body. 
How many times the enemy came to take your mind and the Lord snatched your mind out of the enemy's hand? So why are you running from him and going to astrology? Why are you running to other sources to get quick fixes when the character and the name of the Lord and the word of the Lord creates a hiding place. And I promise you, when he hides you, can't nobody find you. They'll come in your face and still can't see you. So I came to pray for a few people today that feel as if they're not safe right now. Feel as if they're not protected, as if they're left to the whims of circumstances. On this day, I want to pray for you so you could hasten to your safety place. If that's the way you feel, come now. Don't be ashamed. Come and stand around this altar. 